There ain't a podcast that's flyer. You are now tuned in to Direct Misfire. Benson, you and sell it. Tell everyone to tune in. Let's roll the dice. Let me show you what we do win. A fantasy war game. Play it smart and you win. What you know about the crystal pen and the retribution? Hero, hero, giants and knights galore. It's an adventure. This is Kings of War. Let's go. Most of the night stalkers are the echoes of the conclave of heaven. Those as physical forms were lost when the Celestians were split. These are desperate tortured beings denied both life and death by their cruel quasi-existence and driven insane. No one knows what, if anything, is left of the original people that became the night stalkers, but they seem to have taken a variety of new unhinged forms to torment the mortals of the world. Champs, and welcome once again to another Direct Misfire Army Review. Joining me, as always, is Selick. Hey, hey. And Hugh. Howdy. As we scrutinise and analyse the Night Stalkers Army list. So pull up a seat, grab a drink, and let's get into it, these spooky, spooky boys. <laughs> All right, fellas. The Night Stalkers. We've done this once before, a few years back for second edition. I don't think there's too many changes, but we'll still go through with it. Um, I know there's some major ones that... I won't bring up because they were rubbish. So let's start off with their army upgrade. Yep, sure. The Scream Shard is once per game before the unit rolls to damage in melee. You may choose to give the unit Life Leech plus two, special rule for the remainder of the turn. The unit Scream Shard is then destroyed, cannot be used again for the remainder of the game. So five points. I think it's five points on every unit that can take it. Sure is. Wrong, yeah. Five points on everyone. Uh, one use only, Life Leech plus two. Uh, which is an interesting one. I think it's okay, considering that the um, five-point healing brew is one or two points of damage healed. Yeah, that's right. I reckon it's not too shabby. Um, and I was thinking about it, like, is it better or worse than Life Leech 1? Just straight Life Leech 1 all the time, as opposed to Life Leech 2 once. And I think it's, like, pretty much a wash. Like, you have to be in combat. You have to be damaged and in combat three times to get more out of Life Leech 1. Uh, and a lot of the time, of course, you'll either only get to f strike once or you'll not strike at all and die or whatever. There's all those other scenarios. So I think most of the time this is about as good, but like maybe even very slightly better just because you can pick your moment when it matters and then uh, get that little bit of extra heal. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. And I think if you have a look at the nerves across the board, they're slightly lower or they're on that lower side. Mm. Yeah, it's a good little uh, army upgrade. Uh, although, of course, on your really, really squishy units, you might be less inclined to take it because they might just get taken off before they get the chance to use it. Yeah, uh, More for those kind of like medium or really powerful units that could benefit significantly from a heal and are likely to take a few hits before they go down. And anything that has lower nerve that's taken damage that you want to life leech, they're probably going to still be damaged. And... Mm they're still going to die in a lightning bolt blast or whatever. That's yep. it. So for sort of medium units or larger. Yeah. Okay, so speaking of that, let's get into the very first entry, the Scarecrows. The Scarecrows are an infantry unit, speed 4, melee 5, range nothing, with a defense of 3. They come in regiment, horde, and legions. Um, two unit strength for the, the regiment, four, 3 for the horde, 4 for the legion. And their attacks are 15, 30, and 35 for the big boys. These guys are Fearless, Fearless 14 for the Regiment, Fearless 21 for the Horde, and 27 for the Legion, and they come in 80 points, 130 for the Horde, and 190 for the Legion, so pretty cheap Legion there. Their special rules, Mind Thirsts, which I think is pretty much across the entire army list, uh, Stealthy, and Wild Charge D3, and you can give them the Scream Shard for five points. They are expendable for the keywords, a nightmare and Zombie. Yeah, yeah, and they are basically very similar to Zombies from the Undead list as well, so appropriate that they are a zombie keyword. Pretty much. But yep. yeah, Mind Thirst, if you want to cover that quickly, because I think you're right, it is um, like across the board kind of a ability for Night Stalkers. I'm actually not sure why it's a book special rule as opposed to just be 
an army wide special rule, a bit like, you know, the screen chart at the top. But Do you want to explain what it is? So, Mind Thirst, if this unit's within 12 inches of an enemy unit with the inspiring or very inspiring special rule, and it is routed, you can re roll the nerve test. The second result stands. So, in other words, they are inspired if they're within 12 inches of an enemy inspiring or very inspiring source. Yeah, it's great. It doesn't say, as I thought it did, actually, it doesn't say you can't be inspired, but that doesn't matter because there is no inspiring units in the list. Well, sort of. The Portal of Despair does give inspiring. Oh, does it? Okay, I must have missed that. Awesome. So technically they can be inspired by specifically the portal. Yeah. I think, as you've sort of called out, they're zombies. They're just a little bit slower. They've got slightly higher defense. And uh, I guess when you have a look at Mind Thirst, yeah, they've got that. But they've also got Stealthy, so they don't take as many wounds coming in. And they do have that Wild Charge D3, so a little bit harder to predict where they're going. I think they do their job. They're there to just get in the way. They're going to claim objectives. They've got pretty good unit strength. And for their points, I think they're pretty... Solid choice. What do you reckon, regiment, horde, or legion on these guys? I like the horde and the regiments. Don't like the legion? Uh, I've used the legion a fair bit, um, but I find them extremely cumbersome to actually use on a board. And they've got just this massive flank, which is the one one thing that you don't want to be attacked. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's when that nerve dash 27 with a defense of three just goes away extremely rapidly. You want things to hit you in the front, um, to maximise um, that nerve, which I think the Horde does it better than the Legion for me. So if you find yourself in a spot where they would be able to charge the flank if it was a Legion, but not a Horde, then you're going to mm. really regret that extra 60 points because the extra 6 nerve is not going to be enough when you compare it to doubling their uh, the opponent unit's attacks, at least most of the time. Mm. Mm. And I think yeah. 60 points in this list, the difference between those two for an extra 6 nerve, Realistically, it's six nerves. Like the five attacks doesn't really mean anything when you've got melee five. No, um, no, that's right. But that sixty points can be used extremely well across this list. Yeah, and with twenty-one nerves. So the way I see it, I, I'm actually completely in agreement with you here. It, even without having used legion, although I will defer to your superior uh, knowledge of legions. I've never used a legion uh, unit. I don't think. Plenty of hordes though. But yeah, the the dash twenty-one like virtually nothing in the game charges you in the front and breaks you in one turn multiple units maybe but one unit no like multiple hammer units might get you but uh dash 27 doesn't really change that like like if a hammer unit hits you once and then again it'll probably get you as a horde Mm. i suppose there's that chance that they'll fluff their attacks one round as a legion and you'll hold in a spot where the horde wouldn't but mm-hmm. maybe in a lot of times, like the actual tar pit nature of the unit doesn't meaningfully change with that extra six nerve. I could be wrong about yeah. that, though. Mm. Yeah, that defense three is probably the worst bit because, like, it'll just melt, so it won't take. There's not much difference between a legion and a horde. Yeah, maybe if your opponent has quite a lot of shooting, the legion becomes more attractive because they're less likely to be reaching out and flanking you. Mm-hmm. And um, the, I know from playing slaves as opposed to, say, uh, Ratkin warriors. That that de- that low defense means that people people frequently don't shoot the big legion unit, but actually it's not such a bad target because it just takes so much damage so easily that you can get it in a spot where one charge will take it off a lot more easily. They are stealthy. Yeah, that's true. They're stealthy. So at that point, if they're shooting your scarecrows for 130 points <laughs> mm. and they're stealthy, you're like not too worried, right? <laughs> um, so artifacts, what are we thinking? Nah. I, I yeah, think... nah. Maybe crystal pendant. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a terrible idea having a crystal pendant if you're running a legion. So that you're gonna have to combo charge it to kill it, and if you're combo charging it and you pop it, it's gonna explode on you. But Dra- dragon shard shield maybe. Yeah, to pump them up to defense five for one turn. Yep. Yeah, and I think the scream shard's not really a viable option on this. Having. Um, like an extra two wounds back in one turn when your defense three is not it's really gonna, that Yeah, it's going to go away. No, mm. agreed. I don't know, actually. Like, uh, you're going to get your two wounds back in a lot of attack rounds just by the sheer volume of attacks. And if you're going horde and you're trying to save points, 60 points more for a legion, five points puts them... You could think of it as most of the time it makes them nerve 23. And you're Mm -hmm. right, that might not make a difference. But when you think of six nerve is 60 points in this case, you're kind of getting two nerve for only five points there. It's pretty cheap. 
It's and not it a might, bad way of looking at it. It might matter. Yeah. I Give mean, them the healing brew as well, <laughs> in addition to the scream <laughs> shot. For, so ten points for three to four healing. I think a few leftover points in your army. It's actually worth considering. So next up, we've got the doppelgangers. Um, so I like the the sort of concept of these. Um, so these guys here are speed five, melee five, no range, defense four. Uh, they only come in a regiment and their unit strength three, so quite uh, large for a regiment. They've got 10 attacks, uh, a healthy nerve of 15, 17, and the points is a 145. So they have a special rule of doppelganger that we'll get to in just a moment and mind thirst as well as stealthy with the keyword of nightmare that doesn't really do anything too much so the doppelganger rule uh, just when in combat the unit may choose to mirror its opponents to hit value volume of attacks as well as the crushing strength um, it doesn't include the magical artifacts on the opponent um, they're totally ignored but they do include magical items that you put on the doppelganger yeah so it's optional you can not do it but if you don't do it then they're kind of potatoes obviously 10 attacks mm -hmm. with melee five <laughs> uh so it's hard to imagine what unit they'd be fighting where you wouldn't steal the <laughs> the other attacks <laughs> yeah there could be some amazing matchups but um yeah yeah <laughs> um, i think it's quirky are you gonna gamble on it maybe i fought the unit with an assassin once <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> And they were like, <laughs> my opponent's like, wait, do I take the attacks or not? Is 10 <laughs> 5 up to hits better than 4 3 up to hits? <laughs> uh, actually, is still better to take the assassin's attacks, but only very marginally. <laughs> yeah. Not what I like about this unit is the 15 17 nerve. I think they really need that high nerve too because they're only speed 5 and a lot of the rest of the army is quite fast. Um, not all, I mean, it actually varies quite a bit, but there are several quite fast options. So this unit's going to get charged a lot and it really needs to be able to hold against that first charge because where it's want it, wanting to excel is like regiment on regiment combat and then come back and smack them up with your with the opponent's stats. Particularly if your mm. opponent has a lot of glass cannons, then suddenly they become really useful. But they're very matchup dependent. They're a weird unit. Yeah. And I think you've sort of nailed it on the head to counter these guys. You just whack something cheap and nasty into them. Um, because if you're let's just go with a unit of undead zombies for example it's just going to be potato versus potato <laughs> and you'll probably take the doppelgangers out for the whole game just but that. just have have a think about that zombies at their speed hitting doppelgangers at their speed you think that's going to happen well if you just put it it depends if you out deploy your opponent enough right like if they've just got a couple of regiments zombies opposite them it's not like they're going to be out able to outmaneuver them that easily like yeah. So as the Night Stalker player, don't put doppelgangers up as the <laughs> Yeah, you kind of want to deploy yes, them solid. late, I think, to get that matchup because that's going to be important to how effective they are. Yeah, that's it's going to be a tricky one, I think. What about artifacts? It's just difficult, man. Yeah, I mean, you can... It's hard because you would kind of want to be taking their stats just about all the time. So do you put something like extra crushing strength or elite... Or something to kind of hit better. My concern with that, right, is you don't get the matchup, and and now you've spent thirty points on a dud unit. You're right; it's a tricky one um, because you're right. They're such an expensive unit already, and if if you're doubling down on their expense by making them even more, and you just don't quite manage to line the matchup up, then you just sort of yeah, you're doubling down on that that cost waste. I think something cheap that might increase their effectiveness. If you're imagining. I'm going to find a glass hammery kind of unit. I'm going to try to sort of face off against them, hold the charge, charge back. That's kind of their ideal scenario, right? Like that's their use case in my head anyway. So if that's the case, what about Hans Sanguinary Scripture? Something like that, 10 points, a bit of life leech. Yep. So that when they absorb that charge and go back in, or failing that staying stone or perhaps fury. Um, I forget what the name of the fury item is. but The Chalice of Wrath, yeah. Fury could be really nice. Mm. It feels like a unit that almost should have Fury, and it, frustratingly, they're one of the one of the few units that can't have the Scream Shard because I think it would go quite well on them. Mm. Cool. I, I like this kind of unit. I wish there was more weird units like this floating around. Even Pipes of Terror isn't bad. Just brutal if you want to keep them fairly cheap. Just to yeah, because you wouldn't want them to charge something and fluff it by that little bit. But <laughs> I kind of want Pipes of Terror on everyone. <laughs> I often find that <laughs> yeah. play ogres. All right. How about you tell us about the bloodworms? 
Okay, sure thing. So, Bloodworms are um, speed 5, melee 4, defense 4, no ranged. E regiment or Horde or Legion on these guys, unit strength 3, 4, and 5 respectively. 15 attacks, 30 attacks, or 40 on the Legion. 11, 14, Nerve, 18, 21 on the Horde, and 24, 27 on the Legion. So, they're 120 points, 200 points, and 290 points respectively. The most obvious comparison for me with these guys is Scarecrows. Um, these guys also have Life Leech 2, Mind Thirst, and Stealthy. So Life Leech 2 is potentially a critical element of these guys. They're, they're, they aim to grind a little bit more than the Scarecrows are. They have an extra defense, a better melee, and a better speed. So they kind of get upgraded on all of their stats, but at a significantly higher cost. So you, you're talking... You know, 190 for the Legion of Scarecrows or 130 at the at the Horde. These guys are 200 and 290, so a hell of a lot more for a mm. unit that can put out some hurt but still don't have any crushing strength uh, and still don't have a, like a good defense or a good melee. They're just, instead of being complete potatoes, they're like, you know, pseudo numpties. Four's okay, especially given the amount of attacks that it, it has. So mm. if you give them Bane Chant or... Crushing one item, it makes them into a decent offensive unit. That's true. And interestingly, instead of like the Scarecrows go from 30 to 35 attacks from Horde to Legion, these guys go from 30 to 40 for whatever reason. So that Legion does have one hell of a lot of attacks with Life Leech 2. And if, at that point, you're already spending 290 points. You might as well whack a, you know, a mm. plus one hit or, or more likely a, <laughs> a potion of uh, smashy, smashy, crushy, crushy. Mm. Um, unit strength 5 on the Legion as well. That's massive. Yeah, that's a, a big unit strength. Yeah, it's one of the few units that can go to Legion but isn't like considered super cheap chaff because like the super cheap chaff ones have that lower unit strength. You know, regiment's only 2 instead of 3, Horde's 3 instead of 4. But So most Legions are 4, even though Legions sort of sh should, in inverted commas, be 5. But I suppose you need your regiment to be over 100 points to begin with in order to have a legion that big. So it is, it's quite a mm. unique unit in the legion in a way. It's, yeah, it's interesting. Yep. This one here is probably a, a better use of the hammer, I think. Oh, yeah. Hammer so of measure so many attacks, on there. A higher melee. They convert half of those as well. So what's that? 10 wounds with the legion? 10 wounds, getting that life mm. leech to every time. But it's 10, wounds against, it's 10 wounds against a dragon or something as well. You know, it's 10 wounds against mm. anything. It's 10 wounds against earth elementals. That's pretty nice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's mm. not too bad. Yep. The only negatives is the points, right? So, and in its role. Like, is it just yeah. there to sort of take the wounds? Because um, if it is, you may as well just chuck scarecrows back in because uh, they're the same sort of end nerve apart from their fearless. Um, albeit a little bit slower and a little bit squishier. Yeah, that fearlessness makes them feel a little bit more reliable as well. There's no, mm. there's no dreaded double six waiver when your hordes holding up your half your army. That that's always yeah. painful if that and happens. It's, it's a pretty big gap as well in between the nerves and the waiver. Yeah, it's a whole uh, three points in all three cases. Interestingly, so mm. one lower than, one lower than your average in inverted commas, like your you know your human shieldman kind of unit. They got one lower on the. Uh, not the... The waiver. The waiver, that's right. I was trying to say, yeah. yeah. Not the route, but the waiver. Yeah. Like, when I was looking through the list, tossing up between Scarecrows or Bloodworms for that role of being a tar pit, I mm. prefer the Bloodworms just because mm. the Scarecrows can't really do much. They're just there to take the hits. Yep. Whereas Bloodworms can do both. The defense four makes them more reliable in that on that front and being able to hit. The more reliable. Like they will actually hurt things where the scarecrows have a high probability of just fluffing their attacks. Does Hans scripture add on to the yes, life leech? Yeah, that's... it does. Yeah, it just gives a plus one. Okay, so life leech three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a thought. I mean, that's decent. Yeah, you're in that territory where I prefer that on the legion to the horde, definitely, because mm. you, you, otherwise you might like. Life Leech is all well and good if you get to hit multiple times. Having a high Life Leech number is awesome if you can hit multiple times. But if they mm. do, like, say say you got Nerf 21, right? If they do 14 wounds to you and you Life Leech back that three and then they do another 10, you're just matter. dead anyway. Yeah. It doesn't matter, you know. But well, as if they're doing, like, increments of 
six or seven to you and just chipping away at you and you get to keep hitting them back again and again that life leech becomes like invaluable and actually gets you an extra round then you're laughing like life leech i feel like it's a little overrated but it can be so good in the right circumstances yeah it's really tricky i think i think it's really handy on mobile units where they can sort of spend that turn to get out of trouble and then pick a fight to get the life back but yeah i agree with you on that one so we'll move on to the reapers so this infantry unit is speed six melee three no ranged defense four they come in troops and regiments only unit strength one for the troop three on the uh, regiment 20 attacks with the troop 25 for the regiment and your standard nerves here of 10 12 14 16 at 135 points for the troop and 210 for the regiment these guys have crushing strength one and are also my thirst and stealthy and you can give them a screenshot if you want uh, I guess it will factor in later on, but their keywords are Nightmare and Reaper is one keyword that can be interacted with with characters. Cool. Uh, these guys are great, I think. I think they're very fragile. Defense 4, 14, 16 means anything that hits them that's semi-decent will take them off. Mm. But the they've got a high threat, so a couple of troops, is, if you can screen them well, will be a much better cost-efficient way of delivering some punch, I think. Mm, I don't mind them in the regiments, personally. Yeah, the um, regiment's fine. It's just... I know playing with a lot of Defense 4 thing, regiments... Yeah. It doesn't... Like, you'll get one round of combat, and if they hit back, then they're gone. Mm. I personally like them with the Scream Shard, and you're going to need a lot of things to help screen it to, to, I guess, look after them. Yeah. I mean, they're only height 2. We've got a couple of larger things... Mm to try and hide them but yeah you do have to be careful the stealthy certainly help yeah apart from lightning bolt can be the bane of this army if you've got a <laughs> lot of those kind of small cheap units which is one way of taking it there are a lot of ways of taking this army yeah they, they will hit hard given their price I've, I've actually got those in my list that we'll discuss later i tossed and turned around putting artifacts on them and in the end i didn't they are fragile like you said um so i'm just not sure that converting or upgrading their price is actually a wise move yeah they're a tricky unit to to take mm. aren't they because there, there's a lot of units in this list like that where you kind of toss it up because it's so devastating if you just gave it proof sharpness like it's pretty terrifying at that point yes it's expensive as hell <laughs> but it's already expensive as hell like 210 versus 245 but now you've got a unit that if it hits something it's really reliably going to take it off like anything less than a horde yeah. it's it's choppy choppy while there's threes to hit are great but sometimes you'll fluff your attacks 25 attacks on twos Hello, Mama, you know? Yep. Well, even on Defense 5, that's like 10, 11 wounds. So <laughs> it's huge. So we'll jump into the next one, and it's the first uh, irregular, and it's the Phantoms. Uh, so these guys are heavy infantry. Uh, they're speed 10. They're melee 4. No range. Defense 4. They come in troops and regiments with unit strength 1 and 3. Their attacks are 12 and 15, like the... Uh, Scarecrows, they are fearless, uh, and they're dash 12 and dash 16, and they come with the points of 105 and 160. They are height 2, and they've got four special rules, like all the other ones, they've got Mind Thirst and Stealthy, um, but they've also got Fly Now and Nimble. Um, they can also take their Scream Shard for five points. I like these guys. Really, really good chaff, although it is an expensive chaff if you have a look at every other army, for 105 points for that troop. Hmm. Yeah, I keep flipping with these guys just because they're just melee four, no sort of defense penetration. So you kind of have to just try and flank if you want them to actually do any sort of damage. Mm. And 105 points to just throw them in front of stuff is also makes my heart cry a little bit. Yeah, it's interesting that thought of using them as a as chaff unit, I think, as you're both implying. For some reason, it didn't really even occur to me although they're a perfectly reasonable chap unit at 105 i guess just it's just that little bit too high for me to be comfortable using them for chaff and obviously needle fangs exist as we get to a bit later but so for me that means what are you using them for i guess the regiment they're very fast uh unit strength three which is nice mm -hmm. but irregular and yeah no crushing no a lot of units like it like sort of i'm thinking like goblin wolf ridery kind of characters things like that yeah like they tend to have at least 
um, maybe vicious and thunderous one or something like that. Mm. But these guys don't have anything along those lines to help out doing wins. Mm. I just think it's the the speed 10 side of things as well as the nimble element that comes with it. Um, I think it just gives them that two rolls. The one, the, the throw away, yeah, at a slightly higher cost. Um, but the second thing is that they can get flanks. Hunt war machines and stuff, yeah. Mm. And it does help with the stealthy, I think. Um, being able to fly around speed 10. True. Um, and not be taken out easily, apart from with lightning bolts. Yeah, most... And the fearless is nice. W- yeah. When you think about equivalent units that sort of are on the cheap side, at least, these guys are only barely on the cheap side, I think, at the troop, but mm. they, you know, they're flyers, they're a small unit, they're kind of for that flank harass, uh, kill war machine kind of thing. Most of them are not dash 12 you know like they're kind of in that 9 11 kind of range uh, or yeah. even 8 10 mm. for like gargoyle kind of critters so having dash 12 and stealthy means that yeah you're not going to be able to get shot off very easily which is definitely yeah it's worth considering hadn't really thought of that unless you get shot with lightning bolt <laughs> <laughs> yeah but even lightning bolt like with with dash 12 you've got a pretty good chance of sticking around um you need to get hit with quite a few wounds and at which point yeah sure you're screwed but that goes for most units. All right, okay. let's move on to the next one. Okay, next on the list we have Spectres. Uh, so these guys are Speed 6, Melee 6, Range 5+, plus, Defense 3. Um, the Troop, Regiment, or Horde, Unit Strength 1, 2, 3. So this is your shooty kind of unit. They've got 8 attacks, 10 attacks, and 20 on the Horde. Uh, 9, 11, Nerve, 13, 15 on the Regiment, and 20... 22 on the uh, horde mm. 90 points 120 points for a regiment 200 points for a horde so they've got their mind thirster and stealthy of course also got pathfinder um weirdly uh, and shadow Just bolts cause. which is 18 inch pierce one uh little ranged attack so these are your spooky spooky ranged option and one of the only ranged things in the army mm. yeah and they're not that good <laughs> They're a this weird compared unit, to other they? units that are very similar to this, like with the 18 inch piercing one, I mean, yep. they're just they're only slightly better than goblins. Yep. But then they're melee six. Yeah, they can't do anything at all in combat, right? Like, you don't want these no. guys anywhere near combat. They can move through terrain. So, if you've got a terrain heavy board, you've got a Pathfinder. Does Pathfinder even help that much for them? Because they don't want to, they don't want to be moving at the double too much. They want to move six and shoot something. Gives them some cover, Which they but do. it gives them cover. To hit but if someone charges it. I mean, they're very resilient to shooting if you actually stick him in a forest and get him in range with those shadow bolts. But if anyone charges them, yeah, I mean, it seems like their natural home is chilling in a forest somewhere and just sort of poking their toe out and shooting some shadow bolts. But yeah, I just struggle to see their purpose. Um, so, like, I mean, I wouldn't take them in a horde. Um, I might take them in troops and maybe a regiment, but regiment to hold backfield objectives and yeah, it's, I think yeah. they're similar backfield, to like but a, eighteen inches range. Yeah, uh, but you can actually hold backfield objectives and still threaten with eighteen inches. I mean, only barely. Mm. Obviously, twenty four is way better, or, or thirty for that matter. But but you don't have to stand like behind the objective. You can sort of stand in front of it or on top of it a bit and. And then mm. if your opponent's coming towards you at all, then you, you can still sneak into range. But yeah, that 18 inches is just As long as, as such, you don't move. <laughs> yeah, that, that 8 inches... If they had um, steady aim instead of Pathfinder, that'd be helpful. Because if they move, they're hitting yeah. on sixes, which sucks. Yes, if you had... That swap would be fantastic. So all of a sudden, they become a little bit more useful. Because mm, they are going to have to move to get things into range or rotate like pretty frequently. Mm-hmm. So they're, they're kind of a bad version of that elf stand at the back on an objective kind of unit for me because I yeah. don't really know why you're advancing with them. Like You're not going for your opponent's objectives, are you? You're melee six unit mm. like with defense three. Yeah. And also that 18 inches for me is that, that awkward... It's a lot shorter than you think yeah. if you're not used to it. Well, all flyers can get you. All yep. elf can get you. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, the flea bags, they're movement nine, aren't speed, they? Speed 10, I think. Speed 10, so they're even quicker than an elf. So 
like all of a sudden it opens yourself up to getting shut down and unlike say elves obviously i use elves so i'm picking on them but elves can actually slowly chip away in combat the specters just can't do anything really <laughs> but it's just a troop of gargoyles into a horde of these things and the gargoyles win well they probably would <laughs> like six defense three <laughs> yeah but uh, it's a no from me um, hard pass yeah hard pass I it's, I mean, if you want to waste some points, go for it. If you if you feel like you're too good of a gamer and you need to handicap yourself, take a couple of units of these guys. <laughs> well, they're your only shooting unit if you like to reach out and touch a little bit. I mean, it's not in that you have a, a monster that shoots lightning six. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Probably just going for some spells instead of insisting on a shooting unit might be the way to go here. It is an unlock, though. Um, so if you did take a regiment... Yeah, at least they're not irregular yeah. as well. That would be pretty insulting, I think, at that point. But yeah, a regiment you might occasionally yeah no, stuff them. All right, <laughs> stuff. not even items. What if we release the hounds instead? We can try. Uh, so these aren't just any hounds; they're shadow hounds. Ooh. Ooh. So this guy's a speed nine, melee four, range, no ranged because they're hounds. Uh, defense four, troop and regiments only, and oh, I should say these are a cavalry unit. So they've got a slightly bigger base. Unit strength 1 with the troop 3 for the regiment. 10 attacks for your troop, 20 for the reg. And nerve of 11, 13 and 14, 16 respectively. Points, they're slightly more than I would have thought. 125 for the troops and 190 for the regiment. Mm. And their mm. rules, mind thirst and stealthy as with everything else. Nimble as well. They've got regen 5 and thunderous charge 1. I have a feeling that Hugh will like this unit. I do like it. My concern is that they're um, is that they're irregular, and that mm. that might not matter actually. It depends how heavy you go on the characters here or, or the the monsters in this list, because um, I think you can go really heavy on characters and monsters, or you can absolutely take a legitimate army with less characters and monsters than just about any other army because they don't yeah they they have that mind thirst. So if you if that kind of army attracts you where you don't have you know a bunch of flag waving pelicans running around and stuff then mm -hmm. maybe the irregular at that point doesn't matter that much but yeah i do like them they're kind of halfway between reapers and phantoms for me because the phantoms are that really fast unit that can maneuver really well with nimble and stuff but don't hit very hard uh, and the Reapers are the sort of really hard-hitting shock unit, and this unit sort of falls halfway in between the two. So they, I think the only way that you can use them is flanks, because they don't have crushing. Yeah, I mean, the Thunderous, but then you have to pay an item to try and make sure that mm. they keep it, and mm. they hit as well as Goblin Cavalry, melee four. Yeah, yeah, I think they're very... yeah. You, you, the, the Boots or the Caterpillar, as always with this kind of a unit, feels almost required and then you're looking at that 205 or 210 points that is a little exy uh, i mean again unit strength three really fast getting the back line units is really good particularly in some missions uh, and if they can hold their own in a fight and they're not easy to shoot off and they regenerate uh, it's 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 pretty it's pretty good but it's pretty expensive i'm, I'm kind of torn on them i've been torn a lot tonight with these units <laughs> it's so weird <laughs> I mean, they're not. A, it's not a bad unit. It's. I'm sure you can create a list that will make them work. But just from my experience, I think they're just a bit too expensive for what they are. I think because yeah, fourteen sixteen, like the Reapers, they're fragile. But at least they'll get in there. But then they're only hitting on fours with your Thunder one. So you have to make sure you have to keep the Thunder, otherwise they're just hitting with pool noodles. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I hate pool noodles. <laughs> Too much work. <laughs> All right. So what have we got next? So the fangs of needles are next. The needle fangs. So this is the only swarm that comes in. They're also irregular, unsurprisingly. Imagine if needles had fangs. That would be terrifying. <laughs> um, particularly during a COVID rollout of vaccinations. But You'd never we get will... sewing done. <laughs> no. Very true. So these guys do have speed seven, melee five, no range because they're needles... Um, and <laughs> uh, defense of two. Uh, they come in a regiment and a horde. Both of those, surprisingly, have unit strength one. Um, attacks uh, 12 and 24. The nerves are 9, 11, and 12, 14. The points, nice and cheap. 
uh, 80 and 135. They come with five special rules. They come with Fly with their Speed 7, Mind Thirst, Nimble, uh, Strider, as well as Stealthy. Um, their keywords, uh, none of them matter at the moment, but they may in the future. Beast, Nightmare, and Warp Pixies. Ooh. Ooh. That's a bit fancy pixies. Unusual. And they're um, hype ones. They are hype one. Yeah. What do we think? Mm. I like these as the chaff, as the default chaff. Uh, speed 7 with Fly and Strider and Nimble for 80 points. They get in the way well. And mm. if you manage to get a sneaky flank, that's 24 attacks. It hits as well as a Scarecrow Horde. Yeah. Yeah, um, surprisingly. And Nimble and Strider helps with that quite a bit as well, potentially getting in that flank. 14 inch uh, range, you know, flying and rotating and hoosting into a forest and still hitting at max. Uh, capacity. Mm. Yeah, it's it's mm. not it's not actually a bad bad unit at all. The horde uh, for me, like I'm mainly thinking of them as just decent chaff unit as a regiment. But are you giving these guys artifacts? No, that's a correct answer. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can't think of anything else that we can say about these guys. They're just a slower unit of gargoyles without uh, all the others. No, they're not slower unit of gargoyles at all. Gargoyles are too good. No. These yeah. guys are all right. <laughs> Take take a couple of regiments, you'll be fine. Yeah, I think a couple of regiments uh, is very good for this list in general. It's got a lot of reasonably squishy units that it wants to protect. You know, Reed Reapers and I don't know, heaps of other ones as well. Uh, so yeah, why not? Um, all right. So what I think we might do is just take a break right here. We've gone through a few of the units now, and we will be back shortly. Most of the night stalkers are the echoes of the conclave of heaven. Those as physical forms were lost when the Celestians were split. These are desperate tortured beings denied both life and death by their cruel quasi-existence and driven insane. No one knows what, if anything, is left of the original people that became the night stalkers, but they seem to have taken a variety of new unhinged forms to torment the mortals of the world. Alrighty, we're back, and we're going to jump straight into the large infantry, and Hugh's going to take us into the Butchers. The Butchers, big scary unit, uh, one of Mantic's cooler models in this range, although there's a lot of other cool ones. Uh, a lot of people like these guys, it seems. So you've got a large infantry unit, um, pretty down the line in terms of stats for a large infantry, speed 6, melee 4, and defense 5. You have a regiment or a horde, unit strength 2 or 3, 9 attacks on the regiment, 18 on the horde. 13 slash 15 for the regiment, 16 slash 18, 125 points on the regiment, 205 on the horde. So yes, they do in fact have, if you're still looking at the book, the, uh, the, the big chunky, then you will notice that they now have a waiver value, which they didn't used to have, but they have fury, so which they also didn't have in the book. So they made probably the most meaningless change in Kings of War history by changing giving them a, a, uh, a wave of value, but then also giving them Fury. They have Crush Strength 2, Mind Thirst, and Stealthy. I guess you can double six them then. You can double six them, yep, sure. If as you long shoot as they're them. not in combat. If, if you <laughs> yeah. shoot the uh, Defense 5 uh, Stealthy unit and then double six them, yeah. Or, or not even double six them, if you just <laughs> if you just shoot at them. Selick and I were talking about this before the cast, like, yeah, it's... It's, it's almost a silly talking point because it is it is so meaningless. Like, it's not even worth five points, that change, one way or the other, I'd say, because mm. they are probably the worst target in the whole list to shoot at because <laughs> cause they're relatively high defense versus cost. Like, they're low cost for that high defense. And, of course, they've still got the stealthy. If they didn't have stealthy, it might be different, but they do. So, like, why are you shooting them when they've got all these other squishy high cost units that, you, that you're going to want to shoot at? Yeah, because as we've got an army which is just butchers <laughs> <laughs> just butchers yeah as we unpack that however like we sort of could only justify late game so after the butchers have been in a combat or two and getting a lightning bolt off on them that waiver might come in um, when they're outside of combat but geez like i mean does it really matter probably not that much at all um i really like those units they're a hard hitting um sort of crushing strength to fury unit which is is pretty nasty i think even with melee four 
Yeah. Yeah. What I wanted to raise with this unit, which I thought was really interesting, is that it really depends on the context of the army as to how effective these kinds of units are. Because what I compared them to instantly in my head is uh, zombie trolls from Undead. Mm -hmm. Now, zombie trolls are a much maligned unit in Undead. And I think a good reason for that is that they have white hordes, which are sort of like more yep. smacky and then they have other defensive uh anchory units that are sort of more anchory if you like uh and also just other beat down units that fulfill a similar role but maybe are just that tiny bit more effective and so zombie trolls you ra- rarely see the table while as butchers are a near identical unit so they have the exact same stats they have um the points is 115 and 190 on the zombie trolls so they're actually cheaper mm-hmm. um so for your extra 15 points for the butchers, you get a nerve. And that's about it. Uh, stealthy, sorry. You get stealthy and mind thirst, of course. And you know what? That stealthy and mind thirst is probably worth that 15 points. That nerve, stealthy, mind thirst. It is worth it. But this unit mm. is still very comparable. You also got life leech, of course, and shambling on the trolls. But in as far mm. as actually fighting in combat and that kind of gear, this unit is... Well, identical to that other unit, but this unit gets taken a lot in Night Stalkers, in my experience, while as the yeah. zombie trolls get taken very rarely. So it goes to show there's that context of the armies, you know? Yeah, and I think that's just because they're one of the few units with Defense 5. Yeah. And high right. crushing, I think, like other than monsters. This this mm. is true. Maybe they need that. It depends on the kind of list you got. If you've got uh, a lot of hordes of, you know, scarecrows or... Um, or uh, bloodworms or something, and you've got a lot of monsters, you might not need these guys as much. But if you're concentrating mm. more on the other units, then these guys definitely fill this kind of otherwise unfilled role of, of, of anchor that still hits back pretty hard. Yeah, I don't think they need any items at all. Yeah. Because they've got Fury built in for these large infantry hitting on fours, 18 attacks. I, t- I tend to give them Fury just to make sure that they take a round and can keep fighting uh, since I've already got it I don't really want to give them anything else yeah so I don't mind Mesa crushing on these guys um, just to help convert one miss to wound but like I think a five pointer is probably all that needs needs mm. to be on these um, I think work with what they've got because they've got quite a lot as you sort of broke down nicely mm. and also in the context of the list I think regiments of these guys make excellent front lines mm-hmm. uh, routing on 15 with defense 5 and stealthy means that <laughs> they, they might even actually survive a charge well yeah I totally agree with that and unit strength too so you can't ignore them but you also can't kill them easy because of stealthy and defense yeah. 5 as we've sort of mentioned and also if they if they take that charge and survive which is pretty decent less obviously against the super killy stuff leaves the flank of your opponents open for all those fast things that you've got. So I think it's actually a good combo with the fast things and regiments of butchers. Mm. And the unit strength is terrific. Yeah. I think this is... The butchers are a staple in the list. I don't think you'll see many Night Stalker lists without them. Mm. So what we'll do is we'll move on to monsters now. So one that's quite popular is the Mind Screech. This is a height 5 monster that is speed 6, melee 4, no ranged defense 4, uh, unit size 1 and all that jazz because it's a monster. 5 attacks, 13, 15 nerve at 150 points. And these guys are flying. So they've got Mind Thirst and Stealthy of course, but Pathfinder and they're also nimble with that fly. And they've got an interesting selection of spells. Lightning Bolt 6 is great, but then they've also got Mind Fog 6. And Windblast 6. Oh, overpowered. <laughs> so just forget those other two things. Lightning Bolt 6 for 150 points and a unit strength flying nimble pathfinder monster is pretty good. That 150 points makes it so attractive. I, and I know that we joked about it and with the, my overpowered comment there, but I tell you what, having a free Windblast 6 in turn 6 and 7 isn't the worst thing to have if your Mind Screech is still alive. Certainly situational. I mean, I've found that I've been able to enthrall or win blast something off an objective if you're going yeah. second. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. which could actually be quite helpful. I don't know how many times I've been in a situation where there's an untouched unit on an objective 
And so even if I did have Lightning Bolt 6, it wouldn't actually be able to crack it. Yeah. Um, so just being able to wind blast something off an objective and get something else on might be the way to go. For me personally, these guys are the auto includes to actually clear chaff. I just, sorry, before you go, I need to make sure that the audience understands that even though it's got 18 dice worth of spells, this is a spellcaster zero. No, oh my god. Oh yeah, you can't, <laughs> can't, so can't be god. <laughs> Why? God no. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, <laughs> I don't cool. know where I was going with that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think you take these in twos. Um, or if you're super greedy, you might take three just because of that lightning bolt six in the first three or four turns. And then you might want to get experimental with wind blasts in that last couple, but, Mm. um, they work really, really well to clear that chaff that's actually required. I think in this list quite well, the other good thing here, I'm not sure if you covered it, Benson was the height five. Um, Mm -hmm. so most of the things are height two in this list. So being three above all of those, you can literally just sit behind and pew pew straight over with no cover saves. Yeah, it's potentially a juicy target for the reverse reason of that. Like if it's floating behind your infantry and the whole army is stealthy and you're like, well, bloody hell, it's hard to shoot at anything in this army. Might as well shoot the Mind Screech might come to mind. But they've got a decent nerve at 13, 15. 150 points is an expensive spellcaster. But the two things that you haven't met, even though I completely agree with everything you just said, so like especially needing that lightning bolt, there's just so little ranged reach out and touch that I feel like I feel naked when I have like no shooting in my army. I want to have that option. Yeah. yeah. So so providing that is really valuable. And then mind fog to reach out even further if, if you're at a, in a pinch, I guess. But it's the fact that you can speed six and nimble rotate around in forests with Pathfinder. So you can float through those forests nicely And then you're also stealthy. I think that's... And then claim an objective that way toward the end of the game. So that's the difference for me between this and, say, like uh, a Warlock Engineer with a similar number of spells, which is about the same kind of cost. The thing that these guys have is that they can claim an objective, um, and that's pretty great. Yeah, that's stealthy plus Pathfinder. So just parking them turn one in some trees, like they're going to be fantastic in there. Like hard to kill. Also, don't rule out flank charges towards the end of the game. If this thing, if this thing is still alive, often I'll, I've found that my opponent just writes this off and it's just a spellcaster and that's it. So hitting something in the flank with this is getting 10 attacks on 4s. It's mm-hmm. actually not, not bad right at the end. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It has caught a couple of people off. Not very true. I'll be the first to attest to that, that lots of people forget about spellcasters um, with five attacks. I think there's one in the Ratkin army, isn't there, Hugh, that's got five attacks as a caster? Yeah, the brood mother can brood get in mother. there and yeah. do a couple of damage if they want. bit different, though, because it's got life leech, so it can shoot into combat anyway, while well, this guy can't. So mm. you could definitely see situations where he doesn't have that much to lightning bolt. Being able to see overdues, yep. I think, is really valuable there, as you already called out, Sally. But again, if you've just got nothing good to lightning bolt, yeah, jumping in and swinging five attacks, why not? Hmm. All right, let's move on to the next one star. What is it? It is the Planar Apparition. Uh, so this is another height 5 monster. Uh, it's got speed 7, melee 3, no ranged, uh, defense 3. It comes just like the other monsters in unit size 1 uh, with 4 attacks only on this guy. Same nerve as the Mind Screech with 13, 15. Slightly more expensive at 165. It's got a couple extra rules, however. It's got Crushing Strength 1, Dread, and Snare, Mind Thirst, Nimble, Regeneration 4+, Stealthy, and comes with two spells, but is also not a spellcaster. Uh, Heal 7 and Mind Fog 2, with some bonus juicy options that you'll rarely take. Icy Breath 8 for 25 points, and Bastion 2, uh, that can be taken once for 20 points as well. Um, I think this one here complements titan heavy lists uh, big monster mash sort of list with the, the heal, heal. Yeah. Um, and it's not terrible it's not easy to take out with that ensnare um, so it's more of an offensive option that complements quite well um, regen 4 plus is meh I think as in it's great but um, <laughs> are you actually going to use it too much with defense 3 and a 13-15 nerve you really have to dedicate I guess to kill it um, well, it's sort of flanks. like defense four when you factor in it. Snare. has both ensnare and stealthy. 
Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely true. Unless it's um, a lightning bolt. Yeah, except lightning bolts. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I actually don't mind this unit, to be honest. Um, I generally take one usually in my list. I don't think we've got one in this list today, however. Yeah, I think you need to build a list around that heal seven. Otherwise, you'd take the mind creatures a bit cheaper and sort of a bit more. Yeah. Where, I mean, it, it feels like a combat monster with this crushing strength dread, cause it, so you want to get closer to the dudes. Definitely mm. agree. I'm looking at my list now and just wondering if I should somehow swap a mind screech for this guy and like, you got to get an extra 15 points, which is a bit troublesome. I've played against this only <laughs> once, uh, and it was against Jeff. And he used, he made quite heavy use of um, the hounds, which have regen, as well as uh, just butchers and stuff. And then he, he really used that heal to his advantage. And about three times that game, I just remember, he just chilled in a forest, and he's pretty damn hard to take off. Like, if he's chilling in a forest... What are you really doing about him? You've got to dedicate a pretty serious threat to go after him. And even like a bashy unit, like if you have something that has crushing 1,000 and melee 4, like good luck taking him off because he's got, he's got that, uh, yeah, he's got the regen, he's got the ensnare. Like it's really difficult to get rid of him. So you kind of don't, I think is what ends up happening is you just don't dedicate a lot of attack toward him mm. and then he's yeah 165 points is pretty steep for someone who basically just heals but if that heal saves a unit then you've saved a unit that is potentially more than 165 points if you do it once and jeff just kept doing it to me it was really frustrating in that particular game like, <laughs> it was a good game but like i kept like nearly getting his unit and rolling just not quite <laughs> enough and then he would just like heal it right back up it's so annoying he's a weird unit though again i know i keep saying that <laughs> <laughs> well it's night stalkers they're all weird. yeah they're pretty weird all right all right, horror rift weavers. Weavers. Wiff weavers. <laughs> Z? Horror rift weavers. Z? Isn't there one? It's a monster. No, I think it's a collection because it's height two, so it kind of makes me think that there's sort it's of like the um, Barangar. Oh, okay. Is that what? Tortured souls or whatever. Oh, don't know what this unit is. Uh, six speed, melee four, defense three, uh, unit size one, d six plus six attacks. 1113 nerve, 120 points. Uh, weird little kind of middling monster, as you said. Only height 2, Benson. Crush strength 1, dread. Individual, mighty, mind thirst, stealthy. So he gets in there, mighty. Tiny giant. <laughs> mighty kind of matters because, I mean, its attacks are pretty crap. D6 plus 6, melee 4, crush 1. Yeah, it should probably do a damage to something anyway so mighty might not matter that much but but then dread i think is is the key here right this is this is a unit that you try to get in the middle of things and just use dread a lot it's a weird but there's a couple mm. of things with dread that seem a bit more useful yeah the other thing here is that unlike almost every other monster in any other list this has no unit strength mm, that is so it doesn't thing. score so it's almost like a swarm in that stage that sort of aspect mm. i didn't even twig that it doesn't didn't have any unit strength which is kind of makes me think no mm. yeah it's a monster but it's height too so it's kind of not really a monster it's kind of it's kind of a character i'm i don't really understand why this isn't a character and why has it got mighty if it's not a character uh let's yeah. see if i can Good <laughs> find point. you don't need mighty when you don't have individual do you oh it does have individual it has individual and mighty that's why as might Yeah, so you can't overrun it. Yeah, maybe it just could, is it on a monster base? Is oh. that why? Okay, somebody needs to call it. Okay. So it's horror rift weavers, plural, but it's individual. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> this is like the hero that doesn't inspire. <laughs> uh, it's so weird. Yeah, it's it's both mighty and individual and height too. So I imagine all that's just to excuse it being on a like it's basically a character, but it's on a bigger base or something. I don't really get it. Hmm. Well, I, I'm not taking it. Very unreliable attacks. <laughs> Neither am I. Between, between 7 and 12 attacks is quite a few for a 120-point model, to, in fairness. Mm. Uh, merely 4 crush and one, I, but yeah. I suppose being able to just turn around at any point because of individual and charge anything within 12. Could I be guess handy. It's got a point, I guess. So, f But why don't you just take a hero? Well, know. because he does, I'm trying to he does have quite a few thing. attacks. He does have quite a lot of attacks for his points level. Mm. Yeah, stuff him. No I'm not into four, it. Sort of, no. no. Give me a butcher character or something instead for a similar number of points, I reckon. You'll get one. We'll get there eventually. Yeah, eventually. All right, so we're all agreed. We, this, no. 
Just no. This should be horror. horror no. Alright. Let's go to the large cavalry. The first entry for these guys are fiends. Friends? Fiends. These are speed 8, melee 4, range nothing, defense 4, height 4, regiment and horde, unit strength 2 and 3, 12 and 24 attacks for the horde, nerve of 13, 15 on reg, 16, 18 on the horde, 130 points and 215. Special rules, crushing strength 1, mind to thirst, stealthy and viscous melee. And they're also cunning, that's interesting, as part of the keyword. Uh, these guys were super annoying in earlier editions. And they've been nerfed quite a bit, so now they're just a decent cavalry option. Large cavalry, so it's a bit bigger on the base, but 24 attacks, melee 4, crushing 1 is pretty good with that vicious. Uh, needs a bit of support, but 16, 18 nerve is also quite good there. Yeah, I think they're solid. I don't really rate them, actually, because I think I compare this unit to a lot of other, like, hammery units. Like, you've got race that have, you know... Maybe that's not the best comparison because they're such a high class one, but you know, they've got m melee three, they've got an extra crushing. Most of those units that hit really hard, they either have a few less attacks but much higher quality, so crushing two or three and melee three, or they have a few more attacks but still have that melee four crush one. Like I'm thinking Northern Alliance big chunkers, what are those guys? They're also large cav, frost, frost fang. Yeah, so frost fang have 30 attacks in the horde. Um, and they have also have crushed too. So uh, they're also more expensive. They're they're all slightly more expensive than this unit, but not but not a great, not a huge amount. I mean, whites are two sixty to two fifteen. That's yeah, that's a chunk. Yeah, but you could get them up to crushing two on that. But you still got the melee three. But for yeah. forty five points, whites are a speed. lot better than this unit. Frost Fang are also a lot better. They, they are a bit cheaper, I accept that. Uh, and a bit cheaper, and a Frost bit Fang weaker. Frost Fang are slower. A bit cheaper, a bit weaker, but they're too much weaker for me. Like I feel like you need two units to really feel that hammer roll. And then, you, then you're looking at 430 points with no items. Um, yeah, that's, that's a lot. Mm. I, their nerve's pretty high. I don't know. They're, they're just okay for me. I like the brew of haste on these guys. Speed 9. I don't think I'd take them in regiments. No, me neither. I mean, if you look at that horde and compare it to a regiment of reapers in the same list, which is a pretty close comparison, the reapers have one extra attack and melee three. So offensive, but then they, they also don't have vicious. So they hit quite a bit harder, but then these guys are a little bit faster and and a little bit tougher because they've got a higher nerve too. So actually, that's, mm. that's reasonably comparable, pre comparable, perhaps a bit more comparable than I gave them credit for. Mm. Yeah, two more nerve than the Reapers and the extra speed, I think. That high nerve, yeah. Big things there. Mm. And the speed, yeah, that's right. Hmm. I, I hate um, taking these guys on. Um, just purely that I find that the attacks can spike, particularly, as Benson sort of mentioned, if they get Bane Champ with that crushing two, 24 attacks, um, it can actually really, really hurt. And you can't yeah. ever take them off in one turn, usually. Yeah, that really high nerve actually might... I'm starting to get persuaded about these guys that... The really high nerve is, is, um, is definitely a factor. Only defense four instead of most of these kind of hammery units having that defense five, though. Mm. But yeah, they, they should reliably stick. You're right. Yeah. I still think these are quite solid. 215's reasonable price. Mm. You can take a couple of them without feeling like you're just blowing all your money from the bank if you on them. them they're buggered, um, then. But same goes for most units, yeah. in fairness. But yeah. Yeah. If you waver them, that's 16 damage. Like, yep, yeah, yeah, that... Six, no, it's six, it's, it's nine damage against defense four. <laughs> but they're not the only large cav unit. They also have the soul flares that are mm. irregular. Um, and these guys do fly. So they've got speed 10. They've got melee three, which is better. Uh, they also have defense four and no range. Uh, they only come in regiments, however. At unit strength two with nine attacks. The nerve 13, 15. For the points is one, six, five. Special rules, also crushing one. Fly, as I mentioned earlier. Mind Thirst, Stealthy, and Thunderous Charge 1. Uh, they also have the Overpowered Wind Blast 5 and the Keyword of Nightmare. Um, just like the Fiends, they've got Height 4. Weird sort of unit. You can't really, hex them. But, no, you most certainly cannot hex these. Um, that would be <laughs> so we've how had many a bunch of spellcasters so far. No one's been yeah. able to be hexed. No, I was about to say, what's our uh, hexable <laughs> spellcaster count at at the moment? Still zero? Yeah, awesome. We're zero. Still zero. I'll put that on the YouTube. 
um, yeah, I, I find this find this unit weird to sort of use. Like they're a hammer on the stats, right? But then you can only take them in a regiment. Yeah, that's right. If you could so, take a horde, these guys an could expensive be amazing. regiment. Uh, but yeah, I'm sort of comparing them to a phantom regiment here because the price point is very similar. The route is similar. I mean, they got one less than the phantoms. They have fewer attacks, but they're higher quality melee three crushing one and thunder one so they're yeah. probably aren't the phantoms also fearless they are yeah i don't know they're a weird unit <laughs> to... we're just gonna say that about every unit now aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's the, the you can only take it in a regiment and it's a really high point cost yeah that's right and yeah it can actually convert because it's got thunderous charge one and crushing one and melee three so it's like tick 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 excellent and it's then still you look a, nine yeah, attacks. Yeah, it's only six hits plus two to wounds, um, oh. which is in a flank though. Not bad at a regiment. In a flank, it's great. Yeah, if you can get them in flanks, yeah. they're they're amazing. And maybe that's maybe that's your goal. I think with wind blast as well, wind blast can be. But they're not nimble. Wind blast can be quite shenanigany no. in flanks, but you're right, they're not nimble. So you can't move ten, rotate, and wind blast something. You've got to move ten, and then or importantly, march forward pivot get the flank charge next turn. sorry yeah you can't march and pivot yeah. that's right that's right you can move forward <laughs> rotate and pivot you can't <laughs> sorry you can't rotate to the flank move rotate again which is what you would do you do either do that or you'd march and then rotate one of those two things which is what makes flanking you know fast flying flanking units so scary can't do either of those things so you've almost got to deploy them like diagonally to the side or something if you want to go around the flank and get only one rotation or yeah, they're quite a finesse mm. unit, I reckon, this Windblast 5. I think they're not bad, but they're... Yeah, I just keep wanting to say they're weird, but I'll try to say something else. Have you got any other describing <laughs> <I think words>? <laughs> With other... Just relative to the other units in the list, I don't know if they have a place, unless you're going very Windblast heavy with a bit of enthrall with one of the characters. It's just... It doesn't do it for me. It doesn't have any sort of leaning. Like it doesn't hit all that hard. It doesn't um, take damage all that well. It's not nimble, so it's harder to get the flanks. It's yeah. It's just a bit too non-specific. Anyway, mm. shall we move along from that uh, bizarre unit and get the th threshy threshy beast out of the way? Yeah, I think so. The terror of the deep, potentially. I think they wrote. Uh, <laughs> they wrote this idea. Terror of the sky. They wrote this idea that the this threshy threshy beast uh in the fluff which i was reading beforehand i was talking to selick about this ahead of the po podcast as well it's like they had this really good core idea and then they couldn't work out how to apply it to all these different units and five different writers wrote like a similar explanation for the different units and they were like oh but we want to crack and they're like also the beast from the sea also disappeared into the middle ether and then occasionally pop out as a night terror Woo! and you're like what you just wanted to make a tentacle beast like i see i see through you anyway <laughs> speed seven titan this guy melee three you've been uncovered mandy <laughs> <laughs> there's a very thin uh reason for existence but i don't care because the model's rad height six uh speed seven melee three defense three defense three titan what unit size one um of course 10 attacks 19 nerve and 250 points. So 250 is pretty expensive. Uh, and dash 19 nerve is, I suppose, on the upper side for for Titans, but there are some with that sort of 20, 21 range. He's got crush strength only two. So you're wondering like, why, why is this guy so bad so far? And then you read it. And snare. <laughs> Love it. And snare, mind thirst and regen four plus. Oh yeah, stealthy and strider. So he's got a bit of a soft underbelly for a titan because he is a uh, sneaky, sneaky octopus. But you can chop off his limbs and stuff with his defense three and then he was just going to regen them back. He's going to get all up in your grill. He's going to entangle you and ensnare you. Uh, and then, yeah, drink mm. your brains out through your ears. He's creepy. I love him. Ensnare combined with regen four combined with fearless and 19 is, is the kicker there. Yeah, right. and all you have to do is chuck in one planar apparition, and all of a sudden, your even your spike damage on these guys is going to be negated. That's true. It, there is a bit of finesse to using them. Like I wouldn't say a huge amount, but for mm. it, like if you get flanked by a lot of units, it doesn't even have to be a very good one. Um, your your titan, your two hundred fifty point titan is a goner because he's still defense three, doesn't ensnare in the flank, and you know his regen doesn't count for anything when you just 
spear yeah. him. So when he did, so yeah, you, he really <laughs> wants to have his tentacles, his threshy mouth facing the uh, the opponent because if you if you hit him from anywhere else, he's just this big old bulbous brain. He's pretty easy to pierce. Uh, yeah. So top tip: don't get flanked, especially with this guy. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> that's right. I mean. A lot of units that are 250 points get creamed when you get flanked. This is true. But not many of them do it at defense three. Like the, a defense three monster at 250 points is just bizarre. But the fact that he's so weird is why I like this guy. Like this is this guy. Oh, damn it. I said it again. Uh, this is this is one of the uh, reasons to play Night You should have a weird counter, Sally. Yeah, weird counter. <laughs> weird counter. <Done. laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is one of the reasons to play Night Stalkers for me. I like him a lot. Hmm. Also, you don't hear bulbous very often in podcasts. Mm, <laughs> no, that's true. Uh, we can't give them items, so let's move on to the next one. The Shadow Hulk. It's like Green Hulk, but shadowy. Ooh, he's only speed 6, this Titan. Height 6, melee 3, no range for defense 5, unit strength 1, d6 plus 6 attacks with a fearless 20 nerve. 225 points, crushing 3 mind thirst, stealthy strider. So he's just like a spooky giant. Spooky wiki mm. giant. Basically, that's it. He's a cyclops as well, and uh, the model is quite sexy. Mm-hmm. Does the model have an eye, though? I don't... Yeah, he looks as though he, he's a cyclops with his eyes sewn shut, which is bizarre on the model. So if you look closely, it looks like okay. he did have one big eye on the front, and it's been sewn shut so that he can be a creep. Maybe that's just some weird eyelashes, and he's actually just blinking at the point of the model being When created. the photo was taken? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's a giant that has stealthy and mind thirst. Melee 3 is also a lot better than your standard giant, but he's also slower. An iconic miniature, too, and yeah, just he's he's unshootable, basically. I mean, giants weren't not particularly shootable in the first place, but defense 5, dash 20, and stealthy, just forget about shooting him. Um, but what, mm. what he does, which, which giants also do, but in most armies that can take giants... They've got maybe a bit more access to crushing strength. This guy just has crushed three, and that's a useful thing to have access to in an army that doesn't have a lot of crushing, I think. And the model's great. The bigger base without the nimble speed six means you have to manoeuvre more carefully than, say, the terror. Speed seven's mm, a bit more forgiving. I'd actually say this guy overall is more forgiving, though, because, I mean, if he gets flanked by most things, he's just going to turn around and smack him, while uh, the terror mm. is, yeah, a little bit more soft underbelly. Squishy. Yeah. I guess more my point is trying to get him into the units that you want is more difficult. That's right. Yeah, he's pretty much the only real nutcracker in this and, list with his crushing And he does three. it fairly reliably. Sure, D6 plus 6 attacks is pretty rando, but I mean, it's still... It's between uh, 7, and, seven 12, and 12, and he's got melee 3, so he should should hit with... My, like, he's going to hit on 3s and wound on 2s, everything, so... It's all right. Mm. He's a little bit slower than most other giants, yeah. though. Only speed six instead of seven. Yeah, this does matter. Mm. I wonder if the horror rift weavers are like mini shadow hulks and then they grow up because they get like better fighting, better defense. Because they seem very similar apart from that sort of thing. Like they're baby giants. Maybe. And what, they lose their dread when they mm. get big and scary? Yeah, because they're, they're actually quite horrendous. <laughs> and then they actually like get a face and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> They're all right, these Shadow Hogs. Um, I wouldn't take it, just because I'm not a big fan of a giant in this particular list. He's just a bit too slow and chonky. Yeah, I think you can work in a Monster Mash heal list. Yeah, I like him. I'd rather take a Horde of Butchers. Nah, I like him. He's a giant. Giants are good. And you're allowed to like him. <laughs> yeah. All right, so the final Titan here is the Portal of Despair. Portal of Despair? Hmm. Uh, it is a portal of despair. Um, so this is a Titan height six. Uh, it is only speed five. It is melee four. It's got no range and it has a defense of five. Unit strength of one. Uh, it's got a measly three attacks. It is feeler 16. And the points are 90. It has two special rules. It's got dread as well as visions from the void. Uh, the key words are construct and shrine. And it's unique uh, as well. It is unique. So you can only take the one. Uh, the Visions of the Void works exactly the same as the elf special character thing. Um, and that is that at the start of the shooting phase, it can pick any one of its units and give it inspiring for the 
the rest of that turn. You mean inspire the unit or, or give the unit mm-hmm. and all the units around it inspiring? Yeah, so at the start of the shooting phase, it can pick anyone on the board and it will give them the inspiring special rule. Mm. Yeah, remembering that you're only inspiring comes from mind thirst and obviously the enemy inspiring within 12 inches of that unit. Having a 90 point unit like this, having that flexibility to inspire at a unit or give that unit inspiring anywhere on the board while sitting back claiming an objective for the objective game is great i think uh yeah i wouldn't even chill back with it personally i'd probably um just keep marching it forward because it's a very cheap unit that can hold up something for a hell of a long time with defense yep. 5 and dash 16 nerve it's going to be one of the toughest units in your army and it's only 90 points so this is the definition of chonky chaff for me Yes, it's going to inspire some stuff every now and again, which is great. But if it keeps moving forward with the rest of your line as well, it's got dread. Your opponent can't. Your opponent can, to a degree, ignore it, but it's just this big area effect piece that they, you mm. know, just can't chonk through very quickly. And it, it's only ninety points. Yeah, it's really decent actually. Also, comparing to the elf one, it's got a higher nerve and some attacks. Yeah, exactly right, and. Like, it's, yeah, just sitting on a backfield objective, as you say, it, a 90-point unit is about one of the cheapest levels you can realistically do that at. And it's just so much harder to remove than every other unit possibly in the entire game for around that price point. Like, mm. so hard to get rid of. Mm. Yeah, I think when you're putting out your tokens, maybe even just pop one at the back line and this guy doesn't... There's no range on the Visions of the Void, so um, he can literally... Yeah, he's still affecting the board to some extent and just being a huge pain in the ass and there's a lot of units and i know that we're going to have a break in a second but for this one here if you do have that backline token i i don't know how many times you have to sacrifice a a chompy unit or a chaff unit to hold that objective where this can do its job while not uh, impacting any of your offense ability i think that's a really powerful tool for 90 points yeah i think it's solid agree with everything Nice. All right. So what we'll do is we'll take another break here, and when we come back, we'll go cover the uh, heroes. Even the beasts of the ocean ripped bodily from the world of Oscan's deception. The plunging depths and trenches of the world's seas were no refuge from the catastrophe. Terrors are one such unfortunate kind of creature. Grotesque masses of blubber, slime, and indiscriminate parts of the Kraken they might once have been. Okay, we're into the home stretch here of units. So, the first cab off the rank is the large cavalry hero. Hugh, why don't you tell us about this guy? The Dread Fiend. Uh, dreadful fiendish dude that he is. He's a speed 8, he's melee 3, defense 4. Crush 2, Dread, Mind Thirst, Nimble, Stealthy, Vicious. That's right. We're changing it up. We're doing special rules first. What of it? Whoa. Unit Strength 1, 5 attacks, 14, 16 nerve, and 135 points. Mm, so we've got a large cav hero here. He's... Uh, solid. He's, That's yeah, he's is. solid. He's, he's, he's got quite a, quite a nerve on him, um, much like his mm. uh, dreadful, fiendish companions. And, uh, yeah... I mean, Dread's pretty nice at that kind of points cost. Thick chaff uh, on this one. Does a bit of work. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it is what it is. Basically, this is a very fast objective getter mm-hmm. um, that can dish out a couple of wounds. It's a fair amount of Dread in this list as well. So it's hard. Like, you should be getting Dread on something. Yeah. And he'll, he'll get there. Like, with Nimble as well as Movement 8. He's quite similar to the Horror Rift Rift Weavers in terms of its role because, again, we're not talking about units that inspire here. So he just sort of gets in and does a bit of damage and causes dread and is a bit of a hassle. It's the same size base, everything else. For 15 more points, you get Speed 8 um, and you get get much tougher, basically. More attacks? Uh, No. Mm. More attacks uh, on the other guy, but then 3 to hit and Crush 2 on this guy. So I feel like that's kind of comparable if anything this guy's slightly more reliable but you could probably call that a wash but an extra defense and uh, a significantly higher nerve and higher speed he's just way better are you taking artifacts because the rift weavers can't oh i don't know forget the rift weavers nah maybe <laughs> uh, a plus one to hit i think yeah i think one of the five point items the re-roll one of the hits or wounds 
I have a look at this compared to the Fiend's Regiment, right? Mm -hmm. So for five extra points, you get more nerve. Obviously, you're losing... Seven attacks. Losing quite a few attacks and a unit strength, but... You are gaining, I guess, a, a melee um, and I uh, and a crushing strength, a couple of other things. But I think the utility of this hero over the regiment of fiends is actually like better for scenario play, even though it's only unit strength. Yeah, I think one. he's better too. He's yeah. just so much more the nimble, nimble and small, smaller footprint. Being able to get yeah, where you need nimble. to is a lot better than the regiment of fiends. Yeah, I mean, it's the same survivability as the regiment of reapers then i'm a bit iffy on that but again mm. the reapers are a lot more expensive so it hurts a lot more when they when they die mm -hmm. yeah i think this would be a bit of that threat late game when everything's tied up in its combats and this guy's just dancing around getting flanks and rears with his five attacks with crushing strength two and vicious um he's going to be the difference in uh, winning a combat and losing it i think in a lot of yeah. cases don't throw him in early because you wanted to try and survive to the uh, turn four up. I think that's the, the goal with this guy. All right, let's move on to another hero who is Titan sized. Big old chunky. The Void Lurker. Speed 10, melee 3, no ranged defense 4, unit strength 1, 10 attack, 17, 19, 270 schmackos. Special rules crushing strength 2, fly. Mind first, nimble, regen five, stealthy, thunderous charge one, phantasm, and voracious are the key words on that guy. So is this just a fancy giant? Fancy giant. He's more like a dragon. He flies. Oh, yeah. Missed that one. That's and he's nimble. That, that yeah, helps. Flies and nimble is a pretty critical difference. He's, he's, he's a lot more like a dragon <laughs> than a giant. Yeah, he's pretty um, he's pretty nasty. With regen five as well, um, with a relatively high nerve. Yeah, he's on the cheaper end as far as he's big flying beasties go and also has mm. that yeah. trusty regen but I don't, uh, defense 4 is obviously a little weaker most of those kinds of beasties are 5 but then regen and stealthy he's probably got similar survivability still on the charge has those 3 that, that, that beautiful crush 3 on a melee 3 so he's very reliable he's a great unit if you take mm. this guy specifically for flanks adding the um, rule of sharpness for 35 points bring him to 305 means he's taking units off by himself in the flank. Pretty nasty, a big investment to do it. It just means you don't have to spend points to try and support him. Yeah, it's pretty scary. Um, I don't know what else to say about him, so we won't. Move on to the next one. Uh, so the next one is just an infantry hero, uh, and it's the Shade. Height 2, uh, with speed 10, so another flyer here, melee 3, no range, and defense 5. No unit strength naturally with 5 attacks, nerve 11, 13 for 135 points. It has crush 1, dread, fly, individual, mind thirst and stealthy. Uh, this one here can also have that 5 point scream shard to get the extra life leech. Yeah, don't, don't mind this unit. So it does good. its job. It's very, very fast um, with defense 5. So it doesn't pay that flying tax that you do with the wings. So yeah, that's actually pretty handy, and it's not something that you can just zap off really easily either. Individual so, um, stealthy defense five is pretty good. Um, and listeners, you may have remembered we spoke about the shade or observed it in combat in the Kings of Fight Club series. So if we you did. Wanted to know more about it. Go back and have a look at that. Mm. It's pretty good stuff. But yeah, this guy's decent. A war machine hunter. If you give him the Mournful Blade, he's a wizard hunter as well. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I don't see much of a role for him. Mm. So, 135 points. I can't help but see that against the Dreadfiend, um, who is unit strength 1. Obviously, mm. doesn't have fly. Mm. It hits harder. Um, doesn't have individual. But um, I think, depending upon the meta you're playing with, um, unless you've got war machines, a lot of war machines, I'd be taking a dread fiend over this guy, purely for that unit strength. I think a good use for this guy, because he flies and is individual, is locking units into combat by hitting a flank. I'm sure, you're not going to do much damage, mm -hmm. but once uh, your opponent is kind of in combat on two sides, then they can't withdraw that unit. I think that's probably his best role there. But otherwise, yeah. if you put him into combat straight face, then he's just going to get rolled over, and then your opponent will probably. Uh, get to charge into it's easier unit. to do that with but i mean the dread fiend is obviously a lot more effective 
when he does get to do it. Like, uh, and with Nimble and Speed 8, it's not like it's overly challenging. Mm. Uh, yeah, I agree. I'm with Selick on this one. Um, unless you're in very specific circumstances, the Dread Fiend feels better for exactly the same cost. Mm. It's also really, really important here. Because of Mind Thirst across this entire list, your heroes are slightly different the way that you use them. So it's no longer keeping them alive to share the love and share that inspiring. These guys are actually more utilities. So it's what's best for the objectives and to win the game more so than what's going to be there to inspire. That's right. All right, who's next? The Horrible Horror. He is a it's not, infantry it's not that spellcaster. He's Oh, a spellcaster. He is indeed a spellcaster. He's spellcast one. So you... you Counter hey, of units you can hex. That's one on the counter. One on one. So 65 point guy, speed 6, melee 5, and defense 3. Uh, has one attack and 1113 nerve, so 100% a spellcaster kind of character at 65 points. Individual mm. mind thirst stealthy. Lightning bolt 3 is a spell he turns up with, which is okay. Uh, if, you, if you can't afford the um, mind screecher, yeah. If you can't mind screech, you want to budget mind screech. This guy can be a horrible horror. Lightning 3, Aura, Vicious Melee for infantry only for 30 points, which is an interesting one. So it affects all infantry. It's not keyword based or anything like that. Yeah, not bad. And when it says infantry only, this is just occurring to me now, does that count large infantry? I'm guessing it doesn't just, or heavy infantry for that matter, or are they also infantry? Or is it just, just plain infantry? Pretty sure it's just infantry, yeah. Yeah, just infantry. Yeah, they're the ones you care yeah. about being vicious, which is yeah. honestly pretty good. He can Fantastic. replace Lightning Bolt 3 with Bane Chant 2, or he can buy Bane Chant 2 separately for 20 points. He has Weakness for 15 points, Weakness 2, or Mind Fog 2 for 15 points. So, pretty good little caster. He's got a bit of utility, bit of this, bit of that. Uh, Bane Chant's pretty attractive in this list. Mm. Uh, boomstick to make the Lightning Bolt 6. That's definitely a possibility. Um, for me, I run him with the Aura Vicious as an auto include depending on your list obviously but for most lists i would say that that's just a lock that in so it takes him up to what 95 points and then just slap on a bane chant because this list now that you've given everything vicious um adding that bane chant is just this amazing uh, multiplier of 20 points worth and then that's it you might uh, run in with uh, the staff yeah yep. 10 points yep. just to try and make sure that bane chant works yeah, yeah. hundred. So, and that, that is exactly how. One hundred fifteen or one hundred twenty-five points. That's a great support character that you got there. He's bane charming. He's lightning bolting, and he's giving everyone vicious. It's almost like an extra free spell. It's like a bonus double bane chant kind of maneuver. Almost having that vicious there as well. Very very handy. You consider yeah. like the chant of hate or whatever it is item to put on a unit. It's Thirty points in most cases. Um, the other thing is uh, the horn. Um, I forget what it's called sacred horn. I think. One of those horns, uh, but it will increase that aura um, out a little bit further as well, um, to nine inches instead so of just super six. infantry heavy. You might, you might yep. need it. Yep. Just to cover more of the army, but I think just one like the setup that yeah, you said is fine. It's usually fine. Um, I've run the necromancer before with his aura of elite. I think it is, mm -hmm. um, which works very similar. Um, and I've found that I don't need that extra three inch range on the auras to be effective it usually can maneuver him quite nicely into positions mm. it's not so horrific it's pretty good but mm. he ha does have one massive weakness and that is that spellcaster tier so <laughs> hex watch out okay let's move on to the next one banshee the uh scottish uh is it scottish uh spirit that screams mm -hmm. maybe not so much in panathor so <laughs> get ready for your counter this is another spellcaster zero infantry hero. Speed 10, melee 6, no range, defense 4, 1 attack, fearless 12 at 145 points. It has the, sp the Banshee's Whale, Dread, Fly, Individual, Mind Thirst, and Stealthy. Enthrall 5, Windblast 5 are the spells. Uh, what is Banshee's Whale, you ask? That's the when Windblast or Enthrall, they just get to roll for damage. Okay, so it's like the... Um, Wizard Lizard in the Goblins is Sticky Tongue. Okay. Mm. Eh. So it's mainly like the damage is neither here nor there. It's more a, it's a unit that can it's either push you back or pull you forward. So so it's a, yeah, 
maneuverability manipulation kind of kind of character. And no one's yeah, going to stop you from what? casting them spells either, because hex, get out of here. Oh my god! Why can't they just all be spellcaster one? Like, would it, would it be <laughs> a bad thing? Like, in what way would it be negative? Just make the spell do something. Uh, People might actually start taking hex, and you just you keep calling it out, Benson, and rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Do you ever take this guy for 145 points? No one's attacking this thing because it doesn't do much unless they become really annoying. So it's, it's, I guess it's a safe 145 points. And right at the very end, you can fly where you need to because it's individual. That helps to get your uh, line of uh, spell to hit the unit that you want. But Enthrall and Windblast aren't the largest of ranged spells. I guess Dread's there so you can kind of just hover about and hopefully no one has an individual wizard they killer can't take him out because he cannot defend himself at she? all it's not a ban he it's a ban she <laughs> <laughs> yeah we might just leave that one there um yeah it's a, it's a no from me um i i only see shenanigans as it's yeah. sort of play it's a support character that enthrall is quite well. a bit better than wind blast it's much easier to cause a flank to happen or something as a result of enthrall i mean if she enthralls one thing, gets it out of position, and then it gets flanked, do you feel at that point like your know, 145 points was not too shabby? And then she can fly around and start dreading things? If she doesn't do that... There's no surge. Yeah. So you're not going to be able to take advantage of that out of position because you've had your turn casting spells, and then it's their turn, and they can just maneuver back. Yeah, I suppose... Well, yeah, I suppose you're right. So it's it's more it's more a case of preventing them from charging one of your things rather than actually setting up like yeah. a, a rad flank or something. Enthralling them or wind blasting them into terrain so that they lose their thunderous and things like that is is pretty handy and pulling them across so that they can't charge through other units. That's where it's really helpful, but very situational at the same time. Yeah, and I, I just think can't it's... help stop looking at that 145 points for that purpose. Again, if you're really good at the game and you love Night Stalkers, take this one to Handicap. You'll get some use out of it, but um, it'll make it mm. a bit easier for your opponent. Yeah. Unless you're really, really good, then maybe don't take it because you'll annoy them. <laughs> take two of them. There you two go. Two would definitely be a Handicap, but one cheeky one could be actually okay, I reckon, for 145 points. Pretty difficult to justify versus virtually everything else around that price point, though. Yeah. Mm. And there is the... Um, special character right at the end that can also catalyze on some of these shenanigans. But before we get to that, we will talk about the Reaper Soul Drinker. Uh, so that is a, an infantry hero, height 2, with speed 6, melee 3, no range, defense 4, uh, low unit strength naturally with 5 attacks, nerve 10, 12, points 80. Uh, it comes with a couple of special rules, so that it's aura, uh, with life leech plus one, uh, but only to the reapers, and it's got crushing strength one, duelist, individual, mind thirst, and stealthy. It can also take the scream shards for five points. Um, Eighty points on this unit. Um, if you're taking a lot of reapers, take it. If you're not, don't. I sort of don't mind this guy with the wings to become a war machine hunter slash wizard killer because of the melee 3, the crush one, uh, it's got jewelers built in, so it's cheaper than the shade, it's like a cheap shade basically for that role. Mm -hmm. Speed 6, meh. W with the wings it becomes speed 10. Giving your reapers uh, scream shard and uh, the sanguinary scripture is a bit of a gimmick, but a bit of bit of fun, you're at, you're at mind, uh, life leech 2 and you can be life leech 4 for one turn, so... You can gobble back <laughs> your uh, when you take one hit. Still can't. You're still not a unit that can ever take two hits. <laughs> no, you're not going to take a second. You can take one hit and you know slurp it all back up again. Uh, drink that mm. soul. Be a swell drinker. Yeah. I don't know. When you're paying that low points cost for a character, I mean, he does actually hit pretty hard for 80 points. Uh, five attacks, crush one is higher than you would normally expect for that kind of a character. But then it doesn't. You're not inspiring anything, I don't know. Me. I suppose you could also think of this guy as sort of cheapy chaff kind of stuff because if you compare him to like needle fangs, which are exactly the same cost, he has one less speed, uh, but then he's on. he is a little individual guy on his little base, 
And if he charges in and does his damage, which is pretty it's pretty damn likely with five attacks at melee, melee three, three, crush one, then he's still held up the unit in a similar way to what the needle fangs have, but he's also potentially giving a bit of minor support. I think Life Leech one, like it's very easy to overrate that. I don't actually think that does very much at all. Um, but then Duelist, like if he if he manages to like he's gonna keep mages back and stuff and scared of him a lot more so than a regiment of needle fangs is. It's okay. Yeah, and I guess also the difference between the needle fangs and this guy is he can be overrun because he's not uh, mighty. Yeah, that's it. You need to actually get so, the charge, so they need to be within six, which is actually quite important, I think. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Like, is he needs to charge, do the damage, and then he's um, then he's still blocking. But yeah, you can only ever block one unit, and only if they're in charge range. If something's thirteen inches away from you and they're cavalry or something, then you'd much rather be needle yeah. fangs. Or the thing that you're trying to block is fairly close, and then they just counter charge this guy and keep running through. I think this guy's got a place in that kind of MSUE Reaper build, though, where there's heaps of little cheap, hard hitting units, and he can just be another little chaff option that's a bit different to like Needle Fangs. But that's the way I'm seeing him more as as a chaffy thing because he's not inspiring. He's not a he's not a world beater, and um, yeah, he's not very fast either. So, all right. How about you tell us about the next guy? The Dream Hunter. He hunts dreams. He sneaks up on you only in your sleep. It says, let me have him. Speed 7, melee 3, defense 5. Uh, this is the big scary guy in the fluff. He's got 7 attacks, uh, 14, 16 nerve, 195 points, and he is unique. So he's a, he's a one-off. He's the only one that hunts in the dreams despite the fact it's also the fluff for the rest of the faction or something. Uh, crush Strength 1, Dread, again, which is nice. Elite Melee, Individual, Life Leech 2, Mighty, Mind Thirst, <gasps> Stealthy, and Unleashed Nightmares. Mm-hmm. Which is basically, if he's in combat, anything else that's in combat with him also gets Elite Melee. Which I think is quite solid. I really like this guy. Sort of like a vampire. Seven attacks, crush one. Elites is great. Dread is great. Life leech two is. Meh. I suppose it's okay. For Critically defense without five. duelist. Yes, without duelist. But he also gives other friends elite. Yeah, like a lot of these characters that have that kind of special gimmicky rule. What he's, I think, what he's mainly doing is going in, putting an extra few wounds on something, and giving something else elite. So he's almost like a like a shock unit in and of himself because he adds a few wounds and he increases the damage of your other shock unit. So you're kind of running him along with Reapers or something like that, I guess. Mm. And then factor in the combination of your horror with the aura of Vicious for Infantry. This guy is in a fight with your Reapers. So they're taking things off in one go with the 25 attacks, Crush 1, Elite and Vicious. With Dread on top they of that. They are, but you'd want to hope so, because that's over 400 points of stuff, even with nothing. Yeah, and then let's move on to the next thing. Speed 7's great speed for a little guy like this. Your Void Lurker Dragon is 75 points more, you know, and just so much better. He's so many points. I think I think he's solid. I think he's solid too, actually. I do think he's solid, but I he's, think it's Yeah, I think he's at the right spot. A bit hard to afford. Crush one seven attacks is a little bit underwhelming as well. It's really all about that elite aura. Yeah, I mean he's much better against sort of relatively low defense things, much like Reapers. I think he's this is kind of more the Reaper friend in a way than the actual Reaper Soul Reaper Drinker. Soul Drinker. Yeah, because yeah. giving your unit elite is an awful lot better than giving it life leech one, obviously, and you know, he keeps up with him. In fact, he's slightly faster and also has that kind of... He bl- he can blend with Elite himself. He can blend, like, low defense things while he's, he's kind of sucks against anything too tough, just like Reapers. Mm. I think he's perfect support piece to combo with because unlike the Soul Drinker that if you throw him out front and he just gets run over, this guy's mighty, so he's going to hold up regardless. Uh, but yeah, he will be helping out with your friend's Hopefully in flanks, so they have a choice of either the unit or this guy. But I think he is really good. Take him. Don't. Whatever. <laughs> Let's go on to okay. the next one. <laughs> the Butcher Flesh Ripper. This is a large infantry hero. Speed 6, melee 3, no range, defense 5. 
with its strength 1, 5 attacks, fearless 14 for 110 points. This guy gives you crushing 2, mind thirst, nimble, stealthy. Very plain. But solid, 110 points for a defense 5. Fearless 14 guy that gets in the way and also scores objectives. Yeah, pretty great. Ooh. He's 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 very cheap. It, this guy's like chonky chaff for me. You were saying chonky chaff before. Uh, this guy's kind of the definition of that for me because he can get where he needs to be with his relatively small base size and stuff. Um, and he's stealthy, so you're just not going to bother to shoot at him ever. I mean, defense 5, dash 14, stealthy. He's almost as tough as a whole regiment of butchers. Um, and... Yeah, he doesn't do that much offensive damage, but he just gets in the way of things. He's only 110 points, and you can claim objectives and like hold units up for for two turns. Like so solid. That's the best bit, the 110. Yeah, he's so cheap. Ogre characters often seem amazing to me. Like they just read so well, and this guy, unlike other ogre characters, can't be wavered. He just doesn't give a shit. The only thing I'd give him is maybe the boots of speed or the one of the five point items. Yeah, it doesn't need too much, does he? Like, I think the more things you put on him, the less attractive he becomes. I don't mind. I don't mind the healing brew on him. <laughs> it's only five points, and he might even hang out for that one extra round if he just gets hit for a few wounds. Defense five against like anything that's not like a hammer unit. Just heal one or two back. Mm. He might hang out for another round. That'd be super yeah, annoying. Fantastic, this thing. Um, take a couple of them just to be super annoying. Yeah, I'm kind of wishing... I actually had him in my list and I took him out. Now I'm kind of thinking, how could I get him back in again? But <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get to the list, we've got to get through the last one that is also, because it's me, the hardest one to say. So, Anisra? Anisra? How do you, how do you say it? <laughs> it's it's Anisra. Anisra, yeah. Last time we did this, I got it as well, and I just started calling him the Wailing Shadow, so I'm going to continue <laughs> with that. The He's Wailing Anisra. Shadow... He's Anisra. <laughs> it's not hard. You've, well, no. No, it's just not happening. Uh, so it's a unique one. Uh, infantry hero uh, with height 2. Speed 10, melee 3 with defense of 5. Uh, no unit strength with 5 attacks just like the others. Uh, nerve is fearless 13 for 160 points. Uh, so the special rules are beguilement, crushing strength 3. Uh, so very choppy. Dread, fly, individual, mighty, mind thirst, stealthy, strider, and it also has Enthrall 7. Um, the Beguilement special rule is purely around the when it uses the Enthrall 7, um, there's no longer that stop within one inch. So if you Enthrall something all the way in and it would make base contact with the Wailing Shadow, uh, it counts as a fresh charge. Um, so that, that can be pretty handy if you can lay some shooting or some lightning bolts in this list into a unit and then Enthrall it into the Wailing Shadow, um, it can actually complement quite well and um, yeah, be able to take it off in the uh, combat phase. Which is why you, you do... can't enthrall your own units, can you? <laughs> you can't. You can't. No, you can't. Uh... So you would shoot shoot a unit and then enthrall it into uh, this character, and then this character will put on another couple of wounds, maybe one or two wounds. Um, onto that unit and then it will take the test in the combat phase and it won't take a test in the shooting phase if she had like two more attacks she'd be amazing but we... yeah yeah crush three with five attacks is crush three threes to hit yeah that's it she's got these like like fly dread crush three threes to hit like amazing but then only Mighty. five attacks it's like all those rules the the, mm. the decent melee and the decent crushing are a bit wasted when like your average is I will, I'm going to do three wounds instead of two. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, just because she can get hexed, it just makes that simple. <laughs> That's right. She's a spellcaster too. So. I think we're at five... Not being able to hex and two hex. I think that's the count at the moment. Interesting. There's seven casters. All right. Cool. So... Go hex. I don't, I don't do know about, about this one. It's... She's much better than the Banshee. She's way better than the Banshee for 15 more points. Yeah, I suppose 15 more points, yeah. She's, she's got a nerve four a attack. She actually does like meaningful combat damage. Um, but she can be hexed. That's, what's that Why worth? is the Banshee zero and she's two? Why is the Banshee <laughs> one? Come on, guys. This makes no sense. The Banshee can also win Blast, which is okay, I guess. But um, yeah, she's... 
if you're taking the banshee, like find fifteen points and take her. She's way scarier. But well, the banshee's a muppet in combat, and the wailing shadow is a monster in combat. A monstrous like, two or three wounds, though. Yeah, very attacks. very reliable. Yeah. monstrous two or three wounds. A but yeah, she can experience. hunt war machines where the banshee can't. Uh, she can take. She can hunt characters. You're not spending stand. 160 points hunting war machines. Uh, no, but you might get one and then and then turn around and and enthrall something, which could be quite spicy, actually. You do want to hover behind units and use dread on them all, and then you land behind something, you cause dread on everything, and yeah, you do enthrall it back into you. I reckon give it a good old whack, uh, and that will also. Um, discombobulate the unit which is useful if i think where i'm sort of looking at it is you fly behind a unit enthrall it back into you and then it's got that tricky decision of okay do i counter charge i reckon it can't in almost any case right because so she's fly individual stealthy so obviously she's just about impossible to kill from range defense five like just forget about it you're never going to shoot anything ranged at her in a similar way to the butcher or whatever even more mm-hmm. so because she's individual as well uh super nimble so she's going to be wherever she needs to be because she flies so yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. In that circumstance where you pull a unit back into it, you pull a unit that matters back into it, but not one that can really easily take her off and around. Like, don't do it to a unit of whites, but do it to a unit of zombie trolls, mm. say. Like, it's pretty likely that she'll hold D5, nerve 13, or anything just without much crushing mm. for that matter. And then they cannot turn around to fight you. Like, they can't risk it because it's very likely they won't get her. And then they're going to get hit in the arse. Um... Yeah, it's a toughie. I mean, if she had ensnare, I'd say go for it all the time. It just makes that beguilement so much more interesting because then it gives your opponent, like, do I try and take it off with the ensnare defense 5? Fearless 13 is on the cusp of being a bit bit cautious with it, but with ensnare, it makes it more of a choice. At, at this, this moment, I think she's just a bit too much. If you're taking a Banshee and you want to be good, take this one instead. It's tough to justify. Mm. Okay, let's leave it there. Let's have another break, and when we come back, we will cross the finish line. Night Stalkers don't have leaders in a way that a mortal could understand. Some souls are more intact or more malevolent than others and lead their brethren to the slaughter. But loyalty and leadership are truly alien concepts to these beings. Mostly simply follow the actions of others like some animalistic herd. Alrighty Roo, here we go. Last stretch here. So the Night Stalkers. They're evil. How many friends do they have? Not many. The Night Stalkers. Do we take allies with these guys? And if so. What are we taking? For me, um, it's going to be pretty much like all of our other uh, army reviews when we get to the ally section. I don't think they need it. I think they've got access to cheap chaff. They've got access to cheap unit strength for the that sort of game. Mm-hmm. They've got some heavy hitters. They don't have the tax of inspiring, so I don't think they need that. Um, they've got speed. And I think they've got a little bit of fun as well uh, with some of these weird units that we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't think they need anything. I think they've got pretty much everything. It, you can make about three or four different lists um, from this one list. So I think that's that's all you need. The only thing they're missing is sort of the defense, but most things with high defense are usually quite slow and Night Stalkers on, as a general rule are not. So they don't quite mesh very well. They do miss a lot of ranged fire, unless you're trying to focus on the uh, lightning. But again, you're going to be in combat pretty quick, so that's sort of something that they don't need. So yeah, they probably don't need it. They make great allies because of their mind thirst, but uh, I think it also sort of fits that they're being spooky wooky. No one wants to join them in. Yeah. Scrap. yeah, you're right. They don't have defense six, do they? Like, no. Uh, across the entire list. So, yeah, they don't have that top end defense. They do have a, a fair bit of defense five um, that are actually plausible to take, you know, the butchers, mm-hmm. etc. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't think it's needed. Mm. Yep, there you go. Don't take 
allies with the knights of this. You don't need it. So let's get into example lists. I'll start us off, I think, this time. Um, I've gone with a 2,000 point list. Let's see how it goes. So I've started off with the doppelganger. It's just one regiment. Nothing fancy about that. I've gone a horde of bloodworms. A regiment of reapers, as, lo as well as a troop. And a regiment of phantoms. So I'm using the phantoms to mm. sort of like a objective grabber for the most part. I'm going to keep him out of the fight for as long mm -hmm. as I can and just opportunistically hit flanks. Yeah, I could see that. When available, but yeah, they're not getting onto the, the main fighting line. Um, the bloodworms are going to be a solid core because I've got a bane chanting fella. Well, I suppose I should go through the rest. There's also two <laughs> regiment of needle fangs. They're my chaff. I think they're pretty good. Speed 7 fly. A uh, nice solid core of two hordes of butchers. Nothing on them. Mind screech for some long-ranged touching as well as uh, objective grabbing. So that's try and keep that safe for the most part. Mm -hmm. Horror with the setup that we discussed. The vicious aura, bane chant, and I think I might have missed a, something on here. So that's all I got there. I would have put the conjuring staff, but I wrote this list earlier and I missed it. I've got the... Um, Reaper Soul Drinker with the wings as well, because okay. I think Wizard Hunter, because of Lightning Bolt, I feel like I need to kind of take it out. I don't want my um, Phantoms or Mind Screech getting shot up with Lightning. And I've got the Dream Hunter, and as we discussed, this is a support piece for me, because I've got that core of the Butchers, the Reapers, the Bloodworms, and the Doppelgangers on the side, I mean... All they, all those, hit pretty good, and the Dream Hunter just makes, just sort of secures it, as well as that aura of vicious, because I got a lot of infantry there as well. Hmm. Hmm. So that's my thinking. I mean, the Soul Drinker can should be at a ground or halt the big boy, and uh, hopefully I can either hit it with one of my other hitter units. I can see that. Or take out the majors or war machines. Yeah. So that's my Night Stalker list. What have you guys got? Well, uh, I'll t what, what, first of all, uh, what was the unit strength of that, total unit strength? Uh, total unit strength on of this one is 23 with 13 units in 2,000 points. Mm. What I've found is that Night Stalkers generally have quite a high unit strength. But, um, so I'll jump into mine. I also went with 2K, um, a little bit different to yours, actually. I think it's a bit slower. Um, so I went with more Scarecrow. So a regiment and two hordes of scarecrows, and they're effectively a bit of a slow screen that comes across for my three Reaper regiments, all with uh, Scream Shards. Ooh. I've gone with one Phantom Troop. Um, so that one there is my utility, potential chaff, potential flank, depending upon how I'm going to go. Um, and much like you guys, I went with just a Needle Fang regiment as the the first sort of chaff that I can throw, mm -hmm. throw at a wall. Um, I went with the Butcher with the Mace of Crushing to really capitalize on that Crushing Strength 2, um, but also keeping the unit to 210 points. Um, Chaff, I thought was going to be a bit of an issue, so I went with two Mind Screechers. Um, so early game Lightning Bolt, late game uh, potentially sort of pushing stuff around. Um, a Portal of Despair just in case I need uh, Inspiring anywhere on the table. Um, I went with a horror um, with exactly the same setup that we talked about before. So Conjurer's Staff, the Aura of Vicious for my uh, Reapers, um, as well as Bane Chant 2. Um, I went with the Reaper Soul Drinker um, purely for that sort of extra utility. Gives them an extra plus one, hopefully keeping my three Reaper units alive um, with that Life Leech. Slightly um, alive. But I also... <laughs> <laughs> slightly alive one more um but i also put the loot on him i know that's a bit of a weird option because he is a, a melee attacker but i figure that i'm only going to be using the melee attacking as uh like it's going to be the secondary it's going to be a support primary and then secondary as the extra couple of wounds um so i thought the loot adding an extra crushing strength on one of those other reaper units is going to be really really helpful um, with their 25 attacks. So it's a bit more slow, grindy, um, 
but I think it's got all the all the right tools to actually play the scenario yeah, game it's quite of, well. It's a little slower than than some, but I wouldn't call that grindy. Really, like triple reapers, it's hard to call that grindy. Like that's just that's that's mental. Like that's chop, 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 chop. chop. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah. want to maneuver those uh, <laughs> those chaffier units into place as best you can, of course, and just guide those guide that uh, ramrod in there and cause carnage. It's cool. Just. Before we get to your one here, I just made a couple of changes to my list. Basically, just dropping the phantoms from a regiment to a troop still fills the same role, but that gives me points for the Conjurer's Staff. But more importantly, Hammer of Measured Force on the Horde of Bloodworms and Chalice of Wrath on the Doppelgangers. Yeah, that's that seems good. That seems very good, actually. Yeah, I like that. Nice. I also mm. had the Chalice of Wrath so on those guys, originally. So, I... Mine feels mm. like a mixture of your two lists in a way. We've got a lot of the same units. <laughs> uh, I got a horde of scarecrows. I did originally have a uh, an entire, not a horde, a uh, legion of bloodworms with the hammer of measured force, but took them out because uh, it just uh, it was just too expensive. I wanted more cool stuff. Uh, so doppelgangers with a brew of strength. Uh, I think that unit is more cool than it is super effective, but in the right matchups maybe. Uh, Reapers, Brew of Sharpness, um, Needle Fangs with uh, two regiments of those friendos to try to help the Reapers out, guide them in, uh, and also the Doppelgangers. Then we've got two hordes of Butchers to hold that centre. Uh, again, I think that's I think that's what I ended up replacing the Bloodworms with. I had the Bloodworms and some sort of chaff, and I'm like, two hordes of Butchers just feels better so they can put out that consistent damage. Not sure if that's correct, but they, they're good. Mind Screech, just the one. Did originally have two, but then managed to change one for the Planar Apparition. Um, and then we have a Terror. We've got yeah. our big thrashy beast in there. Hey. Uh, we've got a Portal of Despair. To either sit at the back or, or plug forward, as we talked about, and just be an incredibly cheap, cheap annoyance piece. Um, and then I've got a Horror, uh, which has Aura, Vicious Melee, and Bane Chant. Feels like the only way to take it. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't quite afford the Conjurer's stuff. Um, you know what I would probably do in hindsight is swap out the Brew of Strength on the Doppelgangers for the Chalice of Wrath, which I actually had on them in the first place, and get that Conjurer's stuff in there. Just to copy you, Benson. But yeah, I do, I do think that's yep. a good call because you want that Bane Chant to work. Um, especially since, yeah, those those two units, the Doppelgangers and the Reapers, they're super killy. But they need the right matchups, mm. and yeah, sometimes they're going to lack crushing strength against some armies. So just being able to buff that up, I think, is good. Give them a leap to boot, and then I've got a butcher flesh ripper as my last uh, unit there, just as another holdy uppy thing. So I got I got like four or five units that can that can chaff and shield for the doppelgangers and and reapers. So that the, the army's really trying to get them in the right spot and get them in, I think, to do the damage. Well, as butchers and um, terror, I see them more butchers, planar apparition, and the terror. I see them more as like a central holding kind of unit that can take a charge really well. And if I can heal up whoever gets hit, as well as the the uh, terror's natural healing, the regen, it could be really hard to remove those units. Which again, it's it feels like the whole army's trying to kind of get those. Reapers and doppelgangers in to get the right matchups because if it doesn't get that, it's sort of a bit nothingy. Yeah, I do really like no void. No, lurker. I do no void lurker. No, I do really like the shadow hulk as well, and I could see swapping shadow hulk like the horror and the butcher flesh ripper for the shadow hulk because uh, he does do a bit more damage, and the list definitely does lack a bit of crushing strength. But I think I just <laughs> the. The, my problem with that is I want the list to be Night Stalkery, and the two things that I really that that my favourite list units in the list are the Terror and the Doppelganger because they're both like quite weird and they're they're very Night Stalkery, like they don't really exist in any other lists. Did you say weird. So weird? Damn it! Uh, so, so weird, weird. <laughs> right now, but no, like so hot, kind of weird, you know. And then Reapers are also a bit that kind of unit, so trying to maximise them and get the whole army to support them felt like a more night stalkery list to me than taking something that like could just as easily be a ratkin list or an elf list or whatever it might be. Hmm. Very interesting. Well hopefully you get something out of this listeners. <laughs> I'm not yammering on for nothing. Um, let us know anyway. 
And if you've got any uh, tips or tricks for those who have played Night Stalkers a whole bunch, let us know because I really like this list and I think this is one of the top tier mm. armies. As I've mentioned in the top tier cast, go back and listen to that one if you haven't. But uh, yeah, any other final thoughts on this one? No, I think uh, we've gone through a fair bit. All right. So thanks again for listening, and we'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, guys. Sometimes, when the powers of the abyss are strong, the presence of the Night Stalkers rips a portal in the fabric of reality, a doorway between dimensions. The power of the abyss is channeled through such rents that seethe and boil in the air, painful for mortals to see directly. At the edge of vision, the portal seems like a cage of glossy black and wreathing serpents screaming in perpetual agony. Purple lightning crackles and dances across the rent, flickering out and feeding the stalkers with dark energy. Thank you for tuning in with my team. Make sure you follow on Facebook and Twitter. Yes, indeed, more than a game. It's a lifestyle, yes, sir. Hope you realize that the math hammer doesn't work. <laughs> we give the people what they desire. Australian war game and podcast, direct misfire. You don't want to miss a thing. Yeah, we got plenty more. If you're ready, let's go. Stay tuned, that's for sure. Hey.